I'm Peter Davis, a mixed martial artist, and I know what it takes to dominate in a fight. Yet when it comes to my kids, I prefer to let them roll with the punches. But across Asia, there is a multi-billion dollar industry that promises to make our kids smarter. I fast in this triangle. Stronger. <laughs> Take out the fear from you, Mia. And more successful. Are you sure that you know what you're doing? Yeah. Don't drive too fast. Ready, jump move. They're like this tall. And they're pretty good. And that starts even before they turn three. Have I missed out on the opportunity of a lifetime to make my kids super? You've got to focus. I told you before. Don't give me that look. In this episode, I find out if you can hack your baby's development. How far do parents go to stretch their baby's potential? Okay, go see daddy. Okay, okay, shh. I have friends who has children around his age. They started to crawl the one year. He just started crawling when he turned nine or ten months. All right, ready? Show me how good you can get. OK, OK, shh, 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 it's OK. There is no clear evidence to suggest that the practices may actually improve a child's development. Good job, yeah, boy. And along the way, I discover that babies have a curious talent. That was the same sound, by the way. To you, it's the same sound. How to raise a super advanced baby. Good morning, Good morning, Yes, hi. Good morning, Good morning, Sorry, I'm Peter. Nice to meet you. What is your name? J.R. J.R. OK. Good morning, Hazel. How are you? How am I? I'm very good, thank you. <laughs> what are we doing now? Morning circle. Morning circle. I will do my best to help you. Thank you. Let's keep repeating. South Korean Yesol is only four years old, but she already speaks English fluently. Just like the rest of her friends here at Montessori Kindergarten in Seoul, South Korea. Did you, did you make the plan? Rating and Lima and Oreka. Oh, you're gonna be very busy today. Are you a number four? Yes. 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 You, you found an, an the name. I found the pitch. Yesol started learning English when she was just three. Oh, that looks very similar, doesn't it? Same thing. It costs a hefty 1,200 US dollars a month to study here. It's very similar to Tajikistan. That's because the private kindergarten boasts their own specialized method of teaching English. I think so, this is finished. It's finished. Are you sure about this one? But this one is finished. Why do you think it's important for parents to send their children here to learn English? Uh, Yes, has come from a very young age. Why would you say that's important? So, this 
Do you know what the last picture is? Barn. English is the most favored subject amongst Korean parents and children. It's no wonder that some of them spend thousands of dollars a year on English language lessons for their preschool going children. Some even hire native speakers just to play with their babies in English and read them English stories. Thank you. Do you want to read the words? Uh, no. It seems like Korean parents will spare no effort or money when it comes to teaching their kids English. So imagine how surprised they was to learn this piece of news. Last December, the government called a ban on the teaching of English to children below the age of nine. The concern is that it would stress out preschoolers and erode the Korean roots. Imagine that, banning the learning of English. South Korean parents were up in arms. But the band's supporters, such as the Education Pressure Group, World Without Worries About Private Education, tell me that learning another language early is counterproductive. 네, 그러니까 36개월 이하 아이들에게는 가장 중요한 것이 어, 뭐 애착 형성 그리고 모국어 발달인데요. 아이가 자기의 감정이나 생각을 표현하는 단계까지 가게 돼요. 36개월 이하에는 주로 이제 교육 업체, 민간 교육 업체나 아니면은 좀 관련이 없는 유아 교육과는 관련이 없는 좀 언어 관련된 분들, 그러니까 유아기의 특수성이 얼마나 반영되었는지를 이렇게 검증하지 않은 좀 그런 부분들이 많아서 그 뇌가 가설에 대해서 저희는 온전히 신뢰하기는 좀 어렵다고 생각을 합니다. But the ban will mostly affect public preschools and daycare centers because the private ones are still unregulated. So it's likely to increase the number of Korean parents turning to private education, who don't want to miss out on that special window of opportunity when kids have a super language learning ability. How much difference does learning a language early on really make? Is zero to three years of age a critical or a confusing period of time to pick up a new language? Last December, the South Korean Education Ministry called to ban the teaching of English in public schools for children below nine. The reason? Learning another language could overburden the children and hamper their Korean speaking skills. Now, that seems to contradict all that I've learned about young kids and their ability to learn languages. For example, this experiment. A one-year-old baby is listening to seemingly random sounds. But in fact, these sounds constitute different languages. And each time a baby recognizes a sound, we can see that it pays more attention to the picture on the screen. What are the sounds we're hearing on the monitor next door? Uh, well, we're trying to teach the baby a new word. And so we're teaching him a word that's labeled by the sound ta, which is a Hindi sound that doesn't feature in English or in Mandarin. Why are you doing that? We want to look at how good babies are at listening to sounds when they learn new words. Language learning depends on the processing of sounds. According to Dr. Singh, babies under 12 months old have an unusual gift. They can tell the difference between all 800 sounds that comprise all of the world's languages. The look time goes down, so his is going down. So once he's already got that, yeah. he won't bother so much with it. Yeah. And so the Adults can only differentiate about 40 different sounds. Yeah. So ta and ta. Yeah. How are the two different tas? 
they're different in the position of your tongue. So right. when you say ta, your tongue curls back and touches the roof of the back of your mouth. Ta. When you say ta, your ta. tongue moves forward ta. and touches the roof of your mouth just in front of your teeth. So they, they're different in where the tongue touches the roof of your mouth. So if I can't hear the difference, it's because I haven't been trained or learnt uh, from zero to 12 months old. Yes, you would have had to have very early exposure to be sensitive to this distinction, or you would have to go through a lot of teaching and training. So should babies learn more languages? How would that benefit them? Well, the human mind is not a monolingual mind at birth. The human mind, when a baby is born, is able to take up multiple languages just as easily as it can take up, or he or she can take up one language. So. What you're saying is babies really do have the superpower of being able to learn all sorts of languages from birth. Yes. So given enough exposure, babies can potentially learn any language. But they slowly lose this ability by the time they're 12 months old. I've seen a case where a child was in a monolingual household and learned English fluently before entering elementary school. But according to Professor Sean Manning from Hancock University of Foreign Studies, not everything is lost, even if we start later. For children that haven't grown up in bilingual households, how are they able to catch up to compensate for what they've lost? That's a hard question to answer, uh, because some of what they've lost probably can't be caught up. And the later they start, the less they can catch. Certainly, the discrimination of sounds ability. Is there an ideal window of opportunity to learn a new language? As for an ideal age, I really can't give you a firm answer, except that by about seven, things start slowing down. This is one of the education centers in Seoul, where babies and toddlers can play and learn some useful skills at the same time. Because it's not just about honing your kids' language skills. There's a multi-billion dollar industry here in South Korea dedicated to making your baby super. From language classes to ballet, in 2014, Koreans spent around 3 billion US dollars on enrichment classes and tuition for babies and toddlers. Over 500 million US dollars were spent solely on kids below two years old. We are going on a bear hunt. You're going on a bear hunt. Uh oh, long, long, long. What's this? Yeah. Grass. Long, long grass. Reva Kim is a popular parenting vlogger based in Seoul. She blogs about the challenges of bringing up her four year old daughter. Do you want to go for this? Banana. Bananas. Okay, let's go. Hold on. Hundreds of parents visit her YouTube channel to find out the best ways to teach their kids English and other skills. Do you like Seoul? No, I don't. <laughs> Have you sent your daughter to any enrichment classes? English classes, and she's going to a ballet class regularly, like once a week. Once I went to this called Five Senses class, Things like the ballet, sensory classes, swimming, etc. Are, are they very popular here in Korea? I think a lot of mothers, they just want to try it out because they're, they're anxious because other mothers are doing it. Is there cultural pressure to have your baby be more advanced than their peers and hit their milestones earlier? I feel that we are comparing like including me, we're comparing like, oh, is she already walking? Is she already talking? Korean mothers really want their children to have the best. So if you'd like to have a more advanced baby mm. here in South Korea, yeah. how much do you think it would cost you to buy the toys, go to the enrichment classes? Sky is the limit, I think. I sent my older son off to Taekwondo when he was four years old. 
Now he's seven and he's got a green belt. So I'm wondering whether or not he'd have learned some other cool stuff if I sent him to some other enrichment classes early on. It does seem like a lot of Korean parents have it all figured out. Especially when it comes to helping their child meet milestones earlier than others. What could possibly help your baby communicate better? Improve its focus or motor skills? Is it expensive milk powder or listening to Mozart? No. In South Korea, some parents believe it's cooking classes for babies. I'm really lucky to have secured this spot because this cooking class for children between one and three years old is extremely hard to get into. When the online booking opens up, all spots are snapped up within just 10 minutes. And right now, there are 18 kids on the waiting list. It looks like I'm the oldest student here, so I should make something better than them, right? No problem. We're tasked with preparing a simple Korean meal of rice and fish. How does yours look better than mine? <laughs> More mixed. So right now I'm uh, sticking flour all over this uh, fish fillet. Looks like a mackerel. So my rice balls have completely fallen apart. It's not good. She's already frying. Maybe I should be frying as well. Should I start frying? Oh. OK. How old is she? 25 minutes. So over two years old. She so doesn't talk much yet but knows how to put flour on a fish, which is good. Uh -huh. How long has she been coming to these classes? I think that last December. Last December. So do you see her learning anything in particular? So many things. She just wanted to do everything. <laughs> Hello, teacher. Thank you for the class. Uh, this is my effort. I noticed that a lot of the children were two to three years old. Are they really here to learn cooking? Cooking, well, five categories. Jamjamul, do you see? No, the first one is the oil. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can be used to make a dish. The oil can so, this class isn't about training babies to be master chefs. It's supposed to improve their motor skills. But why is it so important? A motor skill is simply an action that involves your baby using its muscles. What we don't realize is that even learning how to flip over 
is hard work. <laughs> Babies are born with no control over hand movements. It's all involuntary. <laughs> Only when they're between four and six months old do they link the thought with the action. And that's when the baby won't reach for just any toy. It'll only reach for its favourite one. <laughs> There's another popular parenting trend in South Korea. In South Korea, a country obsessed with looking good and cosmetic surgery, it appears that beauty treatments start early. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 스파데 오신 걸 환영합니다. Oh, ah, so, uh, shall we have a look at a treatment? This is one of Seoul's highest rated spas. Little Young Wu is only one, but he's already a regular here. Every month, his mum brings him here for a spa treatment. What's happening now? What are you doing now? 지금 우리 아이에게 얼굴 마사지를 하고 있어요. 음, 우와. 일단은 지금 피부를 촉촉하게 하는 제품을 이용해서 아이들한테 해가 되지 않고 그다음에 피부를 촉촉하게 해주는 제품을 먼저 발라주고 어느 정도 보습 보습력은 있는 상태지만 그래도 아이의 아이들의 피부는 연약하기 때문에 보호 보호는 좀 필요한 상태입니다. Spa Day started offering treatments for babies in 2014 because a lot of their customers requested for them. This 20-minute session costs as much as a facial for adults, around 35 US dollars. Youngwoo, now you're feeling better. Wow. Are babies not too young to have facials? 이제 표정 근육이라든가 그다음에 이제 면역력을 증강시켜 줄수 있는 림프를 림프 순환을 시켜 줌으로 해서 아이들에게 면역력도 면역력도 향상시켜 주고 그다음에 이제 혈액 순환을 시켜 줌으로 해서 아이들 피부 또한 맑아지는 효과가 있습니다. 우와, 우와. What effects have you seen after bringing your baby here? 아기가 많이 이제 교감이 많이 생기면서 저랑도 이제 교감이 생기면서 많이 친해지고 그런 게 좋아요. 아빠한테 가자. 엄마한테 뒤로. 반대로 반대로. 응. 자. 아이고. 일단은 아까 처음에 말씀드렸던 것처럼 아이들 정서 발달에 촉각을 이용한 마사지가 아이들의 어. 아이들도 스트레스를 많이 받을 수 있다고 저는 생각을 해요. 그런 부분을 어, 촉각을 이용한 마사지로 인하여 아이들에게 편안한 어, 안정감을 줄수 있는. Will it make my baby have better skin, look prettier, more handsome than other kids? 제가 저희 아이한테 많이 해주는데 우리 아이가 제일 좋아하는 게 V 라인이에요. 그래서 yeah. <웃음> 제가 이 턱선 있는 데 림프절을 많이 만져주면 정말. 아이가 만족할 정도로 예쁜 얼굴형이 되는 것 같아요. 릴렉스 된것 같은데. Currently, babies make up around 15% of spa day's clientele. <웃음> 우와. And as for little young Wu, he seems to enjoy his treatments. 엄마, 엄마. 아빠 아빠야.
In South Korea, baby massage is so popular that many parents learn how to do it themselves. I visited five major enrichment class centers in Seoul, and four of those conduct massage classes for parents. And in recent years, this treatment has become increasingly popular around the world. For example, this bar in Singapore offers massages and haircuts for babies as young as one month old. And on top of that, they can enjoy a relaxing bath or water train. Which is yet another activity that is supposed to help with their motor skills, as well as good sleep and balance. One, two, kick, kick, kick. One, two, kick, kick, kick. And parents swear by it. How long has your son been coming here? Uh, this is that time here. And what made you decide to enrol him into the baby school? Because I think his motor skills and then it also builds up their immune system. Two, three, even though parents seem to be happy with the effects of the spa treatment, <laughs> I'm just not sure if a month old is the right age to start. Even something as innocent as a massage or floating in the water. So I decided to ask an expert. Adora Tang, who is a physiotherapist that specialises in child development. So, right here, I've got a leaflet for a baby spa. Mm -hmm. The babies are being held up by a float. Obviously, that's around their neck. Yeah. From zero to three years old, they said it's okay. Would you suggest, I mean, from zero to one year old, is that a good thing to do? A baby only develops neck control when they're three months old. So right. before that, they're pretty floppy and that it's necessary for good neck control before you want to bring your baby to this kind of activities so that the neck would be able to support the head and the float wouldn't be causing any harm to the baby. Good advice. And they also do baby massages. You would see that in adults, but is it a good idea to massage your baby? Usually such massages are advised to be given by the parents or the caregivers so that it allows for the parent to bond with the child and it also encourages the baby to be aware of the sensory input that they are receiving. You wouldn't want your child to be massaged by a stranger for a long period of time. Uh, it's better for the parents to be the ones doing that. So, Pampering your baby is not a bad thing, but perhaps it's better to learn the technique yourself. And be realistic about it, because there's little scientific evidence to say that it really improves your baby's health and development. But speaking about the physical development of your baby, there's another growing trend that's caught my attention. As an adult, and especially as a mixed martial artist, a trip to the chiropractor usually involves a lot of twisting and cracking, and that's in order to fix my ailments. But why do parents send their babies to a chiropractor? To the right. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Hey, Dan. Say How does yours look better than mine? So, <laughs> more mixed. From cooking classes to baby spas. I've witnessed some of the ways that marketers claim to help accelerate the baby's physical and cognitive development. Uh, you like it, baby? But what is the secret to raising a super advanced baby? lies in the spine. There are at least 53 chiropractic clinics operating in Singapore, and it seems that there's no age limit for chiropractic. Look at you go! OK, walk up a little bit more. This clinic, for example, sees 10 to 15 babies per week. You're doing so good. 
Almost good. Valerie Dahlberg has been practicing for nine years. Aiden is one of her youngest patients. Hi, Valerie. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right, come on back. Baby Aiden has just turned 11 months. He's been under Valerie's care since he was only a month old. Aiden, this is Peter. Hello, it's nice Hello. to meet you. Hello. A bit nervous. I see. <laughs> Cranky. What was the reason you brought him here to start with? He started crying at certain timings, like around 5 p.m. Then it would go on for the next two, three hours, so we don't know what it was. So we asked a few friends. One of her friends sent her child for chiropractic practices, so just to try it out. How fast was his response to the treatment? His cries became uh, less frequent within the next couple of days, so there was an apparent change in him after the first session. Who's that? Okay, it's okay, okay, buddy. It's okay. You're scared. Oh, okay, okay. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, go see okay, daddy. Okay, okay. I know. Valerie is looking for spine vertebrae misalignments. Yeah, buddy. It's okay, it's okay. She's doing it by pressing and examining Aiden's spine and neck, which looks a lot gentler than the treatments I normally get. Good job, buddy. And how do you find the misalignments? The most common indicators in children is a lot of tension or imbalance in the muscles surrounding the spine. Right. And so if it's much tighter on one side, it often indicates that there's misalignment. The force or the pressure that we're using to analyze as well as adjust a, ch a child is that of if you were to ch check the ripeness of a tomato. And so the, the pressure is very minimal. Well, how are Aiden's vertebrae doing today? Well, so far, mid-back feels really good, buddy. But I do need to check your hips. I just am wondering how cooperative you'll be. <laughs> yeah? It's OK, it's OK. Are it's you? Cold okay. hands. Yeah? I just noticed that Aiden was starting to prop himself up using the bench. Yep. Uh, so he'll be starting to walk soon. And will these adjustments, getting realigned, help him hit that milestone faster? Yeah, so if the sacrum or the hips, just in general, if the lower portion of his body are misaligned, that's going to change the way his muscles are working. It's going to change how his ability to even move and walk properly. And so when he first started crawling, and I noticed that he was really kind of favoring one side during that crawling. And so we needed to quickly correct that, because if that muscle imbalance were to continue to get worse, it would affect the development into his walking, into his running, and everything else. So hold him up here again so I can check his lower. Sure. Because he. Oh. All right, ready? Show me how good you can kick. Oh, okay, okay. Shh, shh, shh. I know. It's okay. I know. It's okay, baby. Show me it's how okay. good you can oh. kick. It's okay. It's okay, baby. How, how do you feel? Have you seen a vast improvement in his movement abilities? Yes, because I have friends who has children around his age. They started to crawl uh, at a very late stage, probably around the 11th or probably one year. He has started to start crawling uh, when he turned nine or ten months. How do you hope these treatments are going to help him in the long term? He's able to uh, hit every milestone uh, properly, you know, not because of uh, age such as uh, like, a, like, a, like a walker uh, or anything like that. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Okay. All right, check back. Mm -hmm. There we go, yeah. buddy. There we go. Hi. All right, shall we count again? One, two, and to the right. I didn't say It's okay. I didn't. Yeah. Good job, buddy. <laughs> yeah, ready? Okay, up you go. Up. Oh, Good okay. job, buddy. Finish. Good Finish. job. Good Little Aiden didn't mind the treatment, and his parents are happy with the results. Here. Can I have that? Yay! <laughs> but spinal manipulation, like moving, wiggling, or tapping the joints, is still a controversial treatment. To unfortunately just extend her a little bit to get it in the right place. That's why we that's why we quit. In 2016, an Australian chiropractor got suspended for cracking a four-day-old baby's back and neck. A treatment that was deemed dangerous and unnecessary by other medical professionals. Chiropractors included. Australia's medical boards are calling to ban chiropractic for children. In Singapore, it's considered a form of complementary and alternative treatment, and that's according to the Ministry of Health. The session that I witnessed involved nothing of the scary cracking and jolting joints. 
But how much does it help with a baby's development? Well, I decided to consult a paediatrician on the matter. Good job, buddy. And how are we doing? Pulling up and crawling. What are your thoughts on the whole session? Well, there are no specific adverse effects, although there have been rare case reports of uh, people getting strokes after neck manipulation. So I think it's good when parents are open with their primary physician when they are seeking alternative therapies. Aidan first went to the chiropractor because he had colic. So after a few treatments and adjustments, he was fine. Again, I believe this is an anecdotal report. Um, the studies don't actually show or prove a direct link between these uh, practices and the improvement of colic symptoms. Colic is a fairly common problem that affects most infants and it tends to peak at six weeks of age um, and then subsequently to most children outgrow um, their colic. And, but we do know that it's very distressing for the moms and the families during this period of time when their uh, babies are crying incessantly. So if parents go and get conventional medicine mm -hmm. treatments for their children and they're healthy, what would you say to getting additional chiropractic checkups on top? Again, I would discuss with them the benefits, um, whether or not it's truly beneficial. Aidan's parents said that he was able to crawl and walk before some of his peers. And the parents believe it's something to do with going to the chiropractor. Currently, there is no clear evidence or insufficient evidence to suggest that uh, going for these chiropractic practices may actually improve a child's development. Um, we do know that there are anecdotal uh, cases, um, reports um, of children who have undergone such uh, practices and perhaps their parents feel that there are improvements. Do babies really need help to reach their developmental milestones? So we know that the baby's brain is constantly growing at a pace much faster than yours or mine is. Definitely some amount of stimulation um, would help their development. Babies typically begin to crawl when they're between 6 and 10 months old. As for walking, most babies take their first steps sometime between 9 and 12 months. But some take a little longer. Some perfectly normal children don't walk until they're 16 or 17 months old. So maybe it doesn't matter when we master these skills because at some point, we're all going to walk anyway. As for speech development, babies should be saying their first words by 12 months old. But when they're still too young to speak, how do they communicate? But there's a group that claims it's possible to find out what a baby wants in a more efficient way. Through sign language. Okay, so we're just going to start off by talking a little bit to the um, parents about what baby signs is, uh, why you would like to do it, and how you actually teach it. So we put out I was thrilled when Mel and Gemma, founders of Baby Signs Singapore, invited me to join one of their classes. Anyone feeling sad? I hope not. No one's feeling, no one's feeling sad? Good. Sleepy? Anyone feeling sleepy? Who needs a nap? I think yes. Jamie and Emily are feeling sleepy. All right. Anyone else got any feelings they want to learn? Busy. Oh, busy. It's like, like music. So music's like this, but busy's like this. All right, well, let's start. Baby Science Singapore have been around for about eight years. How are you today, Kids between six and 18 months learn how to communicate what they want through science. Instead of whining and pointing at the fridge or pointing at the bowl, they can just use a simple gesture to tell you that they're hungry. Just to start with, I'm going to teach the sign for sheep. Okay, so the sign for sheep is like this. 
Mellon Gemma's class follows the method developed 25 years ago by two American researchers. Here is the swing sheet. It was a bit confusing at first, but I managed to get the hang of it. Not sure about these kids, though. And the rain sheet. It's very interesting to do the sign language, but the kids don't look like they're picking it up so much straight away. The key to baby signing is repetition. So, yes. like with anything, you need to practice, practice, and practice, and you need to give it to them in a number of contexts. So, we teach bedtime, meal time, bath time. So, mostly routines that parents do every day. <laughs> The baby sign language is great, but if a baby's hungry, it's surely going to find out another way to ask the parent to feed it. Absolutely, and that way is probably most likely going to be crying. So you'll get a child that's frustrated because they can't communicate that they're hungry. So signing is using really simple gestures to communicate needs, wants, etc. So th this is obviously sign language where the, the, the kids are able to hear you. Yes. So that's why you can repeat the words and then they'll get used to the words and the sign yep. for it. And you teach it just in the way that you would normally have a conversation. So you're making sure you've got eye contact and you're doing the sign very clearly capturing their attention and you're giving them a chance to respond as well. Bye bye Gabby, it's time to go. Time to go, time to go. So long Gabby. Bubbles, good girl. She's signing. According to Mel and Gemma, even though the baby may not start to communicate by using these simple signs straight away, they promise that it may help the baby to develop speech sooner. But most kids start speaking when they're around 18 months old anyway. This is what my kids did without any extra help. So I wonder, does signing really accelerate it? <laughs> Dr. Anne Rifkin Graboy is a neuroscientist. She spent 15 years investigating babies' cognitive development. But even she doesn't have all the answers. I went to a baby sign language course, and the kids there were very good at communicating with sign language to their parents what they wanted. What are your thoughts on that? Some parents and children may be able to communicate without baby sign. Others might end up finding it to be helpful. This may or may not work, but if we assume it works, why is it working? One thing that could be happening is maybe they're becoming more familiar with a second language in general. Right. Um, and there is a lot of research to suggest that exposure to more than one language can actually um, improve cognitive functioning. Another possibility is that these kids are becoming better communicators to their parents, and that's making them feel better about themselves. So, and if babies do hit their milestones at a certain time, how does it affect them in their adult life? So that's a great question, and it's one that I think most scientists will tell you they don't know the answer to. There just haven't been enough studies. We know that the brain resources that we use to accomplish a task at one age may not necessarily be the same ones that we use that at another age. So we can't say for sure if you speed this up, we don't know if they'll keep using that strategy as they get older. Instead, you want to focus on really enjoying the milestones when they happen and encouraging your child to enjoy them as well. Even though babies have a super memory, there is no conclusive evidence to say that we can speed up their development. Or it's going to be beneficial in the long run. Car, job, for market. But if you really do want a super baby, the one thing we know for sure is... I could. Find the pitch. They have an extraordinary ability to absorb languages. So, it's one area you might want to focus on, because from what I've learned, we can all be multilingual if we start early.